In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the timeline methods tween to and tween from to. Tween to and tween from to allow us to play any segment of an animation in any direction, any amount of times, at any speed. If we have a timeline called Herman, this code is going to tween from its end label to its middle label three times and take two seconds to do it. These methods also provide a clever way of fake nesting segments of a timeline into other timelines multiple times. We're going to go into this in detail and show you exactly what all of this means. Alrighty folks, today we're going to be using this demo where I have this blue box move, scale up, spin, shrink, and move. Whoa, what's all that? Well, it's just the basic sequenced animation that I've created here in this timeline called Blue Annie. You'll see all of the different movements are commented out for us to easily see what's happening. One more time, we move, grow, spin, shrink, move, okay? And it's just a bunch of sequenced tweens up here. Now, let's say that I wanted to play from this label here called middle, which happens right after the rotation, okay? Well, that's something we've done before. Right now, this button says blueanny.restart. Uh, what I can do is change that over to play, and we'll put in the string of middle. All right, before I test this, let me just pause this timeline here. So we're gonna say paused, true. And then now if I run, let's just see our code right here we're gonna be activating. I'm gonna press this button. It's gonna jump to the middle and then play the last part, all right? So play from middle is gonna take us to where the middle label is and then play towards the end. Now what if we wanted to start at the beginning and play to the middle label? Well, I've shown you previously that we can use an add pause in the timeline that would kind of handle that for us. Um, I've shown you how we can tween the progress of an animation, that might help too. But what I'm going to do is show you the timelines tween to method, okay? And what we can do is pass in either a time or a label. So I'm just gonna put in middle here. And then when I run, you're going to see something happen here. We're going to press the button and we're going to tween to the middle label, which is after the spin, all right? So that's pretty cool. I didn't have to add a pause to the timeline. I didn't have to know the progress. I could just put in this label here. Now, if I press this button again, it's not going to do anything because I'm already at the middle label, all right? So to get around that, what I could do is I could set the from and to values here. So we can change this to a tween from two, and in that case, I could do something like put the time of the start time here at zero. So we're tweening from a time of zero to the middle label. So let's run, and now when I press the button, you'll see that we tween to the middle frame, and this is now repeatable. We're always setting the playhead back to a time of zero, and we're just creating another tween there that handles that action. Now, what's cool about this is that we can do some kind of weird things where I can now tween from the end of the timeline, remember I have that end label in there, to the middle. So now when I run, we can say that here's the starting position, but when I press this button, we're gonna jump the playhead to the end and go back to the middle frame. And again, that's completely repeatable there, and it's awesome. Now what I want to point out here is that when you call tween to or tween from to, GSAP literally returns a tween, okay? So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to take this out of here, I'll cut it, and then I'm going to say let tween equal whatever gets returned when we call the tween from to function. And then what I can do here is say tween dot restart. And so this is gonna give us a very similar end result as what we just had. But what's happening here is that the tween is getting created once, and then here I am just restarting it whenever I press this button, all right? So since tween from to and tween to return tweens, that means we can put these tweens inside of a timeline. So let me show you what that means. I'm gonna say let animation equal gsap dot timeline and then I'm going to say you know what we're going to use the add method and we're gonna call blue annie dot tween two and I'm gonna say middle alright 
So remember, tween2 returns a tween, which is going to be added to our timeline. And I'm going to add a vars object here, and I'm going to say repeat1. What is that going to do? I don't know. But before I get an error, let's just comment out tween.restart, because that doesn't exist anymore. So when this animation loads up, we're going to play to middle, and we're going to repeat one time. All right. So we saw that first animation twice. And then what I can do is add another add where I say blue any dot tween two, and I'm going to say end. So let's run. And hopefully you can imagine what this is going to do. It's going to play that first half of the animation twice. And then when it's done, it's going to play out till the end all right so we built a sequence of these tween two tweens and put it inside of a timeline called animation all right whoops that should be animation and then if we want to control that timeline we can come down here and say animation dot restart so let's just play this one more time and you'll see how crazy it is that we were able to put these tween twos inside of a timeline and sequence them and then I can restart that timeline whenever I want. Could you imagine having this level of control with anything else? I don't think so. And you want to see something really nuts? For this tween two in the beginning, you can do things like change the duration. So right now it's kind of slow. I'm going to say make it just one second long and we're gonna hit run and watch what happens the beginning is going to play very fast and then it goes at normal speed on the way out what did I tell you this stuff is crazy so just to refresh remember we have a timeline called blue Annie it has all these steps in it it has a label called middle somewhere in the middle and a label called end right at the end we're gonna create another timeline that contains tweens of that timeline making its playhead move from a time of zero to the middle label it's gonna repeat that once and do one iteration in one second and once it's done doing both those iterations it's going to tween to the end label afterwards that's all sequenced together in animation which again can be controlled with this little button and before I go, I want to show you an interesting use case for using tween2 in a timeline. So here I have two timelines for pink and blue. When I run, you're going to see that, as you might expect, they both play at the same time. Well, what if we wanted like blue to play twice, then pink, then blue again, something like that. Well, what you might do is build a timeline, as I've shown you before, where we just add those animations to a timeline. So here I'm telling blue Annie to play first and then pink Annie to play again. If I hit run, you're going to see that blue Annie will play first and then pink Annie will play again. Well, what if I want blue Annie to play twice? Hmm. Well, I can't do this. I can't add it multiple times to a timeline. If I try to do this, what you're going to see is that it plays once and then the other one goes, all right? So it's not adding it twice. Now you may say, oh, well, Carl, why don't you just take the blue animation timeline and do something like put, I don't know, repeat one in here. Well, if I do that, it is going to technically work. We'll see that it plays twice and then pink plays. But what if after that, I wanna get really crazy and only have the blue play one more time after pink, all right? Well, that repeat is sort of hard coded into this timeline here, and I don't want that. So let's use tween2 as our solution, all right? We're going to say add blue Annie dot tween2. And as I've shown you, we could put a label in there, or I could just say blue Annie dot duration. All right, that's basically going to animate it to the end of the timeline. And I can say that we're going to repeat one time. Let's just see how that goes. Plays twice and then pink goes. And then what I can do is take that code again and I can put it down here and I can get rid of the repeat and I can do this. So now you'll see that blue is going to play twice, pink plays once, 
and <gasps> blue didn't play again. Why is that? Because we've already tweened to its duration, all right? We've tweened to the end of the timeline already, so tweening there again isn't going to do anything for us. So did I make this mistake on purpose, or did I do it as an accident? We'll never know, but here's the solution. We'll just put a starting value in here, as I've shown you. From to to the rescue. Let's go one more time. We're gonna see blue play twice, pink play once, blue play once, all right? So we can do this all day, but hopefully you get the idea that we can now not add a timeline to another one multiple times, but we can play that timeline's animation however many times we want using tween2 or tween from2. So hopefully this someday gets you out of a bind and you're starting to understand just how advanced we can be with building complex animations with GSAP.